When I was doing my master's degree, I got interested. I started my master's degree in Tessel after being a supermarket manager for a while. I went to the University of Illinois and my first semester I took two classes. One was in English phonology and morphology for ESL teachers and the other was a teaching practicum. In both of those classes, spoken language and pronunciation in particular were really important. And from that point on, I just was interested in that much more than most other areas. I also liked teaching methods, and I was able to later teach pronunciation with Wayne Dickerson, who was a professor at the University of Illinois. And I was able to be the teaching assistant for Pearl Goodman, who taught the practicum. So in my time during my graduate work in Illinois, I worked in both pronunciation and in teaching methodology. Professor Levis emphasized that the study of phonology and morphology can help teachers teach speaking. By phonology, he meant the study of the sound system of a language and how the sounds work together. Sounds work differently in different languages. And so the phonology can be a very difficult aspect of language learning. By morphology, he meant the study of the smallest units of meaning in language, including their sounds. For example, in English, the past tense, ed, is a morpheme. It has the meaning of past. But in order for students to actually use the past tense in their speaking, it's very useful to recognize that the ed form that we put on words in writing actually has different sounds. For example, I say walked, where the sound is a T at the end, walked. I say guessed, where again it sounds like a T at the end, guessed. But when I say played, it sounds like D or studied. So that ED isn't really the sound, the ED is the spelling of the morpheme that has different sounds. And the sound depends on the phonological environment where the morpheme is placed in the word. By phonological environment, I mean which sounds are right next to the ED morpheme. In the first two cases, the sounds that are next to the ED are both called voiceless consonants. The K in English is a voiceless consonant, and so is the S sound. The words played and studied, in contrast, end in voice sounds. So when the voiced sounds are at the end of the verb, the morpheme has the D sound. This is just one example of a very important aspect of English language morphology that is better understood if we can look at the phonology. Professor Levis said he learned how to teach speaking in a practicum class in graduate school. That's a class where the students do practice teaching with guidance from the professor. Professor Levis received a lot of guidance on how to teach the sounds of English, and the students loved to learn. There's a lot to learn about the English sound system, and it's not something that you pick up naturally. You have to study phonology to understand how sounds in English work. Next, I asked Professor Levis to tell us why he thinks that speaking is such an important skill for English learners to develop. He said that people need to be able to talk to get things done and to maintain social relationships. 